Hey guys, welcome back to Comageddon TV, where all geek culture collides. I'm Shannon, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Star Trek Q Gambit, part one of six, so stay tuned. What happens when the crew of the Star Trek Kelvinverse film franchise encounter the Q Continuum for the first time? When the Kelvinverse was created, what happened to the original Star Trek timeline? What will become of many of the Star Trek crew of the future, such as those aboard Deep Space Nine? And has Kirk finally come face to face with the ultimate no-win scenario that he can't cheat his way out of? We'll find out in this six-part story from IDW Publishing from July 2014, written by Mike Johnson, with art by Tony Shastin. This story really caught my interest. I'm not going to review the entire series as a whole right now. Instead, I'm going to release six separate re reviews, one review for each issue. That way, if you don't want to be spoiled of the ending, then you can feel free to skip the final installment of this series. For now... Let's stick with issue number one. We open with Spock and Nero entering the Maelstrom. The entire galaxy believed the two and Nero's crew dead. A short time later, we're aboard the USS Enterprise NCC-1701E, which is currently captained by Data. We join Jean-Luc Picard in his quarters as he's resigned his Starfleet commission and became ambassador to Vulcan. Q has come to make small talk once more with Picard about Spock. For the first time since the events that opened this comic, Picard learns from Q that Spock lives. In fact, not only does Spock live, but he lives in a parallel timeline. However, Picard refuses to hear any more, as no man should know the events inside parallel timelines, just as they shouldn't know about the future. It's best that the integrity of each timeline be maintained. Q reveals that he's visiting Picard to receive his counsel. It seems while Spock's journey has saved the main timeline, it also triggered a sequence of events that will certainly doom the other. Picard tries to convince Q not to interfere, but is unsuccessful. Q doesn't make his presence known to Kirk right away, but remains in the background as a crewman. It isn't until Q puts the Enterprise crew in what he considers a no-win situation and causes the destruction of the Enterprise that he reveals himself to Kirk. While standing on the outer hall of the Enterprise with the captain, Q reveals there are some tests you can't cheat. It's revealed that this issue takes place a few months after Star Trek Into Darkness. It's Q's job here to prepare Kirk for the inevitable. And with that, we receive an ending shot of Deep Space Nine. Honestly, I really like this issue. It was really cool seeing how Q and Kirk would interact since we never got that in live action form. Kirk seems to be a little more intrigued by Q, as opposed to Picard, who sees him as more of a nuisance. Sisko, who is angered by him enough that he punched him in their first and only encounter, and Janeway, who viewed Q as more of that annoying little brother. Kirk, on the other hand, it seems that though confused by Q at first, actually takes more of an I'll show you type approach to him. If you haven't had a chance, I recommend checking this issue out. It doesn't matter if you're a fan of the original timeline or the Kelvinverse timeline. This issue has something for both fan bases. I'm Shannon for Comageddon TV. Take care, guys. Hey, guys, if you like this video, make sure you smash that subscribe button and click on the little bell to receive notifications on all our upcoming videos. Hit the like button, make sure and leave us a comment so we know how you felt about this video. And don't forget to share with your family and friends. Until next time, I'm Shannon for Come Again, where all geek culture collides.